Okay, terrific. Danica, hey, congratulations on your new short film, Sally, Get the Potatoes. Thank you. Thank you so much. More of a congratulations is being showcased at the Dances with Film Festival uh, this year, which is one of the most prestigious film festivals in the world. Uh, tell, tell us what you think about that. It's a true honor. We are so grateful to be included in this year's lineup and amongst so many incredible filmmakers, as well as being in the kids pro section. So these are films that are highlighting coming of age stories or stories that have to do with uh, kids point of view. And that just feels so full circle for the film that we made. It's really awesome. That That is pretty awesome. So so wh where did the original idea came from for Sally Get the Potatoes? So the backstory is actually a bit of a journey. I was a film teacher for a long time on the Upper East Side of Manhattan at a studio called The Plaza New York. And when I was teaching, I was trying to inspire my high school students that as long as they knew what they wanted to say, what their voice was, what they wanted to tell the world, that they could find their way in through any sort of device or storytelling technique, like a location or a prop or even a random line of dialogue. And one of my students shouted out, Sally, get the potatoes as an exercise, just a random line of dialogue you could put in a script. And everyone laughed because it's clever and weird. And it hit me. And I said, no, I think there's something here. I, I want to show you what I mean. I'm going to do an exercise and I'll do it for myself, but I'll bring you a script and I'm going to write a script that has that line in it. And that's how this story came to be. And it's a really beautiful moment of the teacher becoming the student and how when you put yourself in that position, you're kind of then put to the fire and say, okay, well, I told them that they could do this and now I'm going to do it. And what is going to come of this exercise? And what came of it was uh, a film that seems to be resonating with a lot of people, which is just so exciting. So one line sparked you to write an entire story and script all around that? It did. Yeah, that's how this all happened. And I've always been really interested in coming of age stories. Even as a kid, I was like aware of my own childhood in a unique way, I think. I was the youngest in my family. I grew up around a lot of adults. And I used to love movies that had kids, but only one kid in the movie and the rest of the people were adults. So obviously I was looking for this mirroring that we all do in art and films like Uptown Girls or even My Girl has some pretty dark themes for a young coming of age story. And I think I always knew that that's something that I wanted to honor, both my love for that genre, but also something that really spoke to me. And there was something about the name Sally. It sounded like this cute little girl. And I think starting with this name of a cute little girl, but having her end in a very big grown up way where she's really gone on a journey is something that I think we all need to remember about kids. I've worked with kids for a long time and they're often very cute, but they're also little people who have feelings and thoughts and ideas. And I think that's a really important thing that I want to share with the world and help open up a uh, conversation as well. I, f I found your uh, short story very interesting because um, instead of having the little girl ex going through her experiences, she's basically witnessing other people's experiences. T tell, tell us about uh, going, you know, write, writing those little mini stories to uh, as a coming of age for this little girl. Yeah, and just to give some backstory for those who haven't seen the film, this film follows Sally as she takes an unexpected ride in this laundry basket that her housekeeper pushes through their very nice Upper East Side home. And she is spying, unbeknownst to them, on all of them in their rooms. And when we were thinking about the moments that she was going to be taking in, two of my executive producers, who are actually my former students, Lila Malati and Morgan Zoya, they had a really great note on one of the first drafts of the script, which was make the siblings older, make her even more isolated from the rest of the family. And we wanted to find things that weren't so traumatic in a big picture sense, but more truths about life, how our bodies are going to change, how we're going to fall in love and how we're going to lose that love. Those really simple inherent moments that as you start to realize that the world is a complicated place can really hit you. And not having her have the comfort of anyone around is something that I hoped would drive home this feeling of um, how we all might have felt in those moments. You feel alone when you learn these things. And it, with uh, the older sister, obviously, like it, you, the, the movie opens with them all fighting and you're not exactly sure what's going on, but obviously there's a rift in the family, but everyone also has their own stuff going on. And isn't that true about life? We walk into work, we have a bad day, someone else is making us mad, but we forget they probably also had a really bad morning and they've got stuff going on too. And all of these things are happening at once, but we don't always feel confident or safe to share. And I think that's something that is really hard for a little kid to learn. And, and if we keep modeling this 
this feeling as adults of keeping all these things inside, these are, this is what our kids are going to keep learning. And so that's really what we wanted to hit home on is these moments that are really, um, in a way, very simple, but very complicated for a six-year-old mind to wrap her head around. Now, how much, how much um, a debate did you actually have trying to create this journey for the girl to go from one scene to the ne next scene? Because, you know, you, you must have had some kind of discussion to make this like an affluent family, because not, not a lot of us have uh, housekeepers and a laundry basket. <laughs> <laughs> that goes they her. yes that is a <laughs> that is a true statement and honestly when I wrote the script I kind of wrote it as an exercise and went well I'll probably never make this I don't know anyone who has a home who looks like this and like I said I have two executive producers who are former students and they were so passionate about helping me make this that they found me a location through a family friend and it really did need to warrant uh this very upper uh, you know upper scale affluent family um, in a way that also highlights, I think sometimes when it comes to money, I didn't grow up with a whole lot. And as a kid, I think we all have this idea that if we just had more money, everything would be better. <laughs> and when I started working with some more wealthier families, I mean, we have a variety of families that we work with, but it was really, it was really eye opening to me to see that every kid still had their things they struggled with. It doesn't matter how much they have their kids. They don't know. They don't have any other way of living. This is what they know. And I think also just giving some room to that was something that was important to me. And that's why I wanted to set it in this sort of house. But yes, also for her to be traveling in a rolling laundry cart that a housekeeper is pushing, we certainly needed to find some backstory. We created the mom to have a backstory of being a really renowned chef in New York City, where she's also trying to manage this household. And she's going through this marriage and she's trying to take care of three kids, but has this huge career on her shoulders. And that kind of gave us this way in of why would they live here and why would she be so distracted from her child? Um, and something that I think is authentic to a lot of working moms today as well. Well said, well said. Of course, the centerpiece of uh, your short film would have to be the little girl um, herself. And one of the things they always teach in uh, film skills is never to work with children and, and animals. But uh, tell us about this uh, little actress that you actually found, because she has to play, how would you say, playful and yet serious at the same time, right? She does, which I think mimics a lot of how kids operate in the world. We just don't always see the serious side if they're not our own. And Kinley Hyman is a revelation. She's a star. She just turned seven. She is really a dynamo for this little tiny thing. And when we found her, it was just such a difference because when we auditioned her, the way she spoke to us and the way she could just communicate with us one-on-one, -on -one, not even the sides, as her own self, she is really an amazing person at her little age because she has a very full sense of herself. She knows what she likes. She knows what she thinks. She can communicate really clearly. And I would ask her things on set. Last night we were on the red carpet and we were about to walk in front of 18 cameras and press. And I looked at her, I said, do you have any questions about what's going to happen? And she goes, no. And I believed her and she did not She, she feels that um, secure in knowing when to ask her things and when she's okay. She's just, she's an amazing little thing. And we, marveled at her performance because she really could take all this depth in and be able to execute it in her face. I mean, the, the movie does not have a lot of dialogue from Sally. You don't hear her speak that much. She's really just witnessing these things and reacting to these things. And when we were filming in the laundry basket, I was just feeding her prompts. Like she didn't know what was in the film. And so it was more about me kind of thinking about what was going to help her understand what kind of reaction to have in a way that felt authentic, but not was going to scare her or traumatize her in any way as an actual person. And it was just such a remarkable experience. And we really had an incredible time together. We, I feel very bonded in a very beautiful way. I think this is the first big project she got to work on. And this was the first big project I kind of got to make for myself. I've been directing for 10 years, but this is my debut. And so in a way, even with our 30 year age gap, almost, we went through this together. Yeah. That does sound that does sound wonderful, and it sounds like you had a wonderful experience last night, also. Now, um, you, you said this is your uh, first project. Tell tell us how how somehow you you went from a classroom experiment, and then all of a sudden to something like a short film like this with two of your former students as executive <laughs> producers. I mean, how did that actually came about? Because you, usually that doesn't usually happen, or do, or does it? <laughs> No, I think this is a really unique story. And 
as I've talked to filmmakers, I've realized all of our journeys are unique. There's really no one way into this industry or into this art form. And for a while, that scared me. I think I thought I was supposed to be following some sort of really rigid path. And it was confusing to know when and where to jump and how to make those moves. So for anyone listening, just find your way in and go for it. There's no right or wrong way. But for this particular instance, these two students had gone on to film school. They went through our whole program. They applied to film school after they graduated from high school, they got in. And when they came home for the summer, they said, we really want to work on something this summer. Whatever happened to that script you wrote for class? Um, we didn't end up making it in the class. And I said, well, we need a location. We, we If we got a location, we could certainly try to film it. And in between working at Applause and this film, I have also taken on a career at a company called Lit Video Books. And so I'm the director of production there. And it's more of a documentary style company, but we do a lot of live action recreations. And it was a really great way for me to start to build my network and crew in New York City in a larger scale. And I also got to direct all the live action elements of the video books. And so that gave me some reps also with just running a bigger set. I was also line producing and sometimes crafty manager, sometimes production designing, really wearing a lot of hats. But that's a humbling way to then understand how to empower once you start hiring folks and how to also give them respect and the fact that everyone's working really hard in their in their own roles. And so with that crew that I had built and with these students who found me this location, it really was a lot of people coming together saying, we want to help you, which I still like, as I say, and I have to take a deep breath because it was so humbling that a lot of people came out and volunteered their time or worked for really low rates to make this come to life because they believed in what I wanted to do. And they believed in making something together after we had worked on other things all these years. And that's really how this came to be. But I couldn't have done it without Morgan and Leela. They're fantastic young filmmakers. They're only gonna be juniors, I think this year. So they certainly have a long career ahead of them. But this was an exciting way for them to see from the upper level, what a film set looks like, how it operates, where the money goes, how it all functions. And I hope that empowers them on their own sets as well um, in their schools. So how was that overall overall experience of making your debut into, I want to say a narrative a storytelling re rather than documentary style that that you used to be used to before? Yeah, I've always been a narrative storyteller by heart. I grew up in the theater and doing plays on Long Island and musicals. I filmed my first feature when I was 14. So this has always been an art form that really stuck with me. I ended up going to school for musical theater and then at that school, Pace University, I studied directing for a year and I got a bug for sure, but it took a little while for me to find it again. And when it comes to the work we do at Lit, it's really fantastic because we're taking these author interviews and we're combining data visualization and archival footage and animation and live action recreation to bring together concepts that the authors are speaking about. So it, it has this really unique format and the live action elements were so creative because a lot of them were just little one-off scenes or moments that we had to illustrate this author's point of view, but still make it creative and interesting to watch and, and look really polished and high end. And so those moments, some of them were narratively driven, um, but I've always been a, a big fan of storytelling. Even as a kid, I ran around and just made up characters and <laughs> played from dawn till dusk when I could making believe and making things up I grew up on Hitchcock a diet of Hitchcock and I love Lucy I say uh, my mom is a huge film fan and certainly gave us a really great foundation as kids although I don't love birds so thank you to the birds because that did do a number on me but other than that <laughs> um, and as an actor first, I think this has been really full circle to be able to work with actors on a set. Once we got to filming, I had been, I produced this film, I direct, I wrote this film and obviously I directed it. And there came a time, I think on day two on set where I finally, we were finding our rhythm. And my DP looked at me and goes, do you want to go rehearse with the actors? And I said, I, I could do that. That's all I have to do. And he's like, yeah, everyone else is good. They're, they're good. Take off producer hat, take off writer hat, go just go play. And that Oh my gosh, once I opened up that door for myself and let myself just direct, it was so satisfying. Wow. So 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 what do you want to to do down the road um, you know, for for yourself? I would love to direct in this space when it comes to intergenerational relationships and stories, stories that combine different points of view and that allow families to watch something together, maybe with some older kids, but something where a grandmother and a mother and a daughter can all sit down and watch something and look at it in their own points of view, but all have something to talk about after or have a takeaway that feels really valuable to them or gives them the courage to share their own experiences. And that could come in many forms. This could come in television, film, video content. I'm 
not a person who's stuck to one medium. I think storytell good storytelling is good storytelling. And so if I can find myself a venue to direct and produce in those ways, that would be the greatest dream come true. And I'm also writing. I just got signed with Sandstone Artists. So I am working on a feature script and hoping to be able to work on my craft in that department as well to keep I mean, as a writer, you're then reading scripts as a producer and a director, it all comes around. And obviously we find our own strengths and where we like to spend our time, but there's no greater art form and no harder art form than writing. So I'm trying to put some work in there as well to really give it some due diligence and see where it goes. Well said, well said. Well, let, let me uh, wrap it up with one last question uh, with, with you because, uh, you know, the story, you, you could have said it any time, you know, throughout the entire year. Tell, tell us why you set it up uh, during the holidays um, for itself, because, you know, so, for some people, the holidays is the most depressing time of the year. <laughs> for some people, but not for kids. Kids usually are pretty happy until at least, you know, they are older and maybe a bit more jaded. This was an important part of this because we wanted to immediately set this in a place where everyone should be happy. I like the word should a lot in life because I think it's fake. I like I like exploring it. I don't like it. Um, but I think using this idea that it's the holidays and this house is beautifully decorated and are having this amazing party from the outside, if you didn't know what was going on, you'd be like, well, that sounds really rad, good for them. And when you go inside, everyone's not doing well, except for Sally. And so starting in this place where this is her favorite time of year, and she is just her playful self and falling down into this hole that ends pretty tragically for her little self. Obviously, this is in her own world tragedy. Um, it felt like it even just hit that extra little twist of, of sadness for her, knowing that this holiday was not going to turn out as happy as the rest of them were. And it might change her holidays forever. And we do have those moments as well. So yeah, it just gave us this extra sense of a familiarity as well. We all know what it's like to be around family in the holidays. We know the pressures and the stress, but we also know what it was like as kids and that magic of waking up and seeing the presents and the trees. And like, there's this weird transition that happens at some point between childhood and adulthood with holidays. And it felt like a really easy thing to kind of bring everyone in on the same page to go, okay, we all know what's going on here. Well said, well said. Yeah, most definitely. Kids should not grow up too fast. And that's that's what this uh, short film is all about. So, Danica, thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation with us. Uh, Sally, get the potatoes. Uh, I can't imagine you're still, you're still in Los Angeles enjoying yourself. So enjoy the rest of the film festival at Dances with Films. Thank you so much. It was an honor speaking to you. Really appreciate it.